What's good with you? What's up? I see you in your king chair. I love that chair. <laughs> you and your king, you ready? You ready? <laughs> Let's go with it. Oh, man. Awesome. Awesome. So we actually are just getting started, um, kicking it off today. We got people tuning in, inviting their friends. And um, I know it's going to be a spectacular time today. And uh, I what I love is, number one, thank you for joining us today, me and my community. Uh, we love watching you. We love what you do. And I'll say this, you guys, spectacular does everything, I think, with such an impeccable work ethic. And that's what we're going to be talking about today, that work ethic, because a lot of people, they want the results, right? They want what it looks like on the outside, but they're not ready to dig their heels in and get to work. So yeah. we're going to be talking about that. We're going to be talking about that. How you feeling, Spag? How you, how's your day going, Spag? <laughs> My day is fine, man. My day is fine. Just, uh, just running around, opening a few bank accounts and you know, yes. getting, getting a few things done. I got a cover shoot tomorrow, so just getting prepared for that. Wow, wow. So you're watching from Cali. You're in Cali right now in LA? Yeah, yeah. Okay, I'm nice. So Rancho Cucamonga. You said what? Rancho Cucamonga. Oh, California. you're in Rancho Cucamonga. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> awesome, awesome. So what we're going to be talking about today, uh, Spec, we're going to be talking about crushing uh, 2020, right? Mm -hmm. For many people, this year has been a crazy year. Right. A lot of ups and downs emotionally, financially. There's been so many ups and downs. And I really wanted to come on and give people actual takeaway steps on how they can utilize the rest of the several months left in this year and really maximize it and really focus in on their goals, whether it's building their business, whether it's growing their followers, whether it's monetizing their Instagram page. So we're going to be dropping like a lot of gems for you guys. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, um, and then toward the end, we'll be taking questions and we'll open it up and take questions. Cool. Mm -hmm. Let's do it. Cool. Cool. So Spake. Okay. So I read, okay. So I read that, you know, when you were in school, you, when what, I think you were like 11 years old, you said you were selling candy and you were making like two grand a week. Is that mm -hmm. true? Yeah. 1500, two grand around that. Okay, it was fluctuating. Around there. Yeah, it was fluctuating. Wow. So ever since you were young, and this is what people have to understand, you always had that work ethic. You you always had that entrepreneurship mm -hmm. spirit since you were like a shorty. Yeah. Yeah. So how were I mean, you doing it in school? Like how, like I want to picture you for a moment. Like how was you doing <laughs> it in school? Like how would you get people to buy all this candy? It was easy. I mean, every every successful business, you gotta just find out a demand. Like you don't want to create the demand. You want to already fill the void of a demand. And, mm -hmm. uh, and that's, that's what was going on in school. Everybody was hungry. This was before <laughs> vending, vending machines was out. Yeah. And once I felt that demand business start booming and then it got mm -hmm. to the point where I couldn't handle this demand myself. So I had to get help. And that's what kind of scaled me horizontally and getting employees basically to help me at 11 years old because I just needed help. And so you had employees at 11. Yeah. I had 10 employees at 11. Yeah. What? That's insane. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And that's, that's before vending machines was out. So the schools was realizing how much money I was making. And then that's when they put vending machines up because oh. vending machines wasn't, wasn't up. But then they seen guys like me, selling all the candy and making all the money then they decided mm -hmm. to put vending machines to cut me out of business and that was the first time i ever went out of business when mm. when the vending machines came and of course i fought back i had people cut the, cut the wires i had stuff you know paper in the quarter slots i was trying to what? yeah but then they put a camera pointing towards the vending machine and then it was game over from that point right forward. you was exposed yeah. you couldn't do y'all couldn't do it no more yeah, I didn't want to get my guys locked up because the principal used to literally come in my class and say, hey, we got one of your employees. Like, they would literally come. Yeah, it was like that. It was like that. And then they was happy to catch my employees because they used to go, come and eat my candy. So I used to go in. <laughs> yeah, and I had a green. All my bags was green bags. So I used to go in the principal's office and see my bag sitting on the floor with the, with, with the bag empty of my inventory gone. So <laughs> it used to piss me off. But, you know, it's all good. Oh wow, they're laughing in the comments. They got they got the crying <laughs> faces in the comments. <laughs> nah, they got me, man. <laughs> wow, wow. Okay, so fast forward to that young version of you. 
to now you, you know, starting a group, you know, with you and your brothers, Pretty Ricky, and you're traveling the world, you're performing. And not only that, you were doing like most of the choreography for the group, right? Or were you doing like all the choreography? I was doing like 80% of it, 85%, uh, more 90%. Ninety yeah. yeah, like percent. Okay. 90%. And was but everyone always, getting it at first, or you had to really work with them? Nah, because the way the way we dance, I knew everybody's strong point. So I just okay. wanted everybody to live in their unique ability. I didn't want anybody to be doing something too crazy. That's why if you ever been to a pretty Ricky show, everybody have their moments, and then whatever moments they can't create, I create and just go crazy. And and that's based on what they can't do. So like. And we all offset each other based on strong points and weaknesses so we can all balance each other. Right. So what I love about that is that you've also always had that eye to see, um, you know, people's strengths, people's weaknesses and bring it together for good. You know, whether it's been in music, whether it's been in business, you know what I mean? And I think that's such a unique gift that you have. And so you guys were like traveling across, you know, all over the world doing tours, having girls chasing you down, mm -hmm. showing up at the hotel rooms, probably crazy, crazy, crazy. But then, you know, with you uh, gaining all of that notoriety, that popularity with the press, you were able to use that, right? Mm -hmm. And really transform yourself into such a phenomenal businessman, starting your own company at Wazar mm -hmm. and really helping so many people and companies and brands uh, monetize their influence, you know? And um, I want you to speak more to that because I know that you said you started doing Twitter. You started on Twitter doing like these parody accounts, right? Where you would do like the grumpy cat and you would do mm -hmm. parody pages for Beyonce and parody pages for Cat Williams. Um, and those accounts were growing. So you knew how to grow, uh, grow, grow, grow influence, right? Grow those numbers on social media. So um, I want to talk first about, you know, starting from the bottom for people that are watching this and they're like chance or spec, like I'm starting from the bottom and it's, you know, it's, it's still just a couple of months left in this year. How can I get started with what I have and the influence mm -hmm. that I have? What well, all depends on what you want. If the game plan is to launch a successful business, then you got to just figure out what you want and who you want to follow behind because success leaves breadcrumbs. I don't want nobody ever to go and try to figure it out themselves. Like literally mm -hmm. all the greats already gave you the blueprint already and they're forced to show you the blueprint because you can literally see it happening right in front of your eyes. So if you yes. literally want to be anyone, you can reverse engineer what they have and then compare it to modern times and literally just do what they did, but in your own way. So I always like to say, don't focus on the what, focus on the who. Not, who, not what you got to do to be successful, but who you have to model after to be successful. And right. once you kind of tap into that, that's when everything starts taking off for you so, because you then you're not confused anymore on what to do. You already have a blueprint. All you got to do is follow it. And then if you're able to really get like the blueprint blueprint, if somebody going to hands on teach you and like coach you or mentor you, then that's like next level. You just got to invest in yourself at that point. You know, Will right. Smith said, God put the greatest things on the other side of fear. So if you're fearful of that one thing, then you just got to take action on it. Get uncomfortable because being uncomfortable is not about it feeling great. It's for you to grow. You know yeah. what I'm saying? That's that's the game plan. It's not it's not a pleasant thing for you to grow. When you're growing, it's like it's uncomfortable. It's gonna it's, you're, you're getting stretched, and yes. as you're getting stretched, it's it's to make you feel like giving up. But when you don't give up and you do what you got to do to get where you got to go and you do the things that others don't want to do to get what others don't have then that's when you see the rainbow you know in the pot of gold at the end of the rainbow so i would definitely say if you're a beginner entrepreneur find that person who you want to coach you train you if you want to get to where you want to get at an accelerated pace then that's that's what i would do if i was you guys yeah so you're speaking of mentorship which i was actually just talking about on my page yesterday so did you have any mentors? Like who were some of your mentors that helped guide you and help navigate you in, in success? 
I didn't really have no mentors until like, until like three, three years, three, four years ago when I realized what a mentor was. And I would, yeah. I would say my mom was my mentor, my very first mentor, me not knowing, just seeing the way she hustled, seeing her drive, seeing, you know, how she provide for us. And then my dad got out of prison uh, from 12 years in prison. Then he got out, then he started showing me and teaching me things. So I would consider him as a mentor, but like a uh, official, like, hey, this is my mentor. Mm -hmm. That didn't happen until, until I got, um, like three, four years from now. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Nice, nice, nice. Are you guys taking notes in the comments? I need to know. Are you guys taking notes? This is good stuff. This is good stuff, Spay. So, okay, so building a foundation, right? A lot of people, um, they don't really have a solid foundation. And I think a part of that foundation, like you said, is when you have a mentorship, when you have a mentor, you have someone that you can follow, you can follow follow their footsteps and it makes it just so much easier for you to have that blueprint for your life, that foundation yes. for, for your life. So yeah. people that are watching this right now and that, that are saying, you know what, COVID-19, since COVID-19, I've lost my job. Since COVID-19, you know, I've been out of work. I don't have any money. I had to use all of my savings. Heck, some people might be watching this and don't even have any money in their bank accounts, right? Maybe they're just dead broke and they're struggling. And they, you know, I just had someone message me the other day saying she has five kids and she was laid off and now they're homeless because of what's happened with COVID-19. So what type of encouragement can you give to people that have suffered loss this year and how they can bounce back? Like the mentality that they need to bounce back. Well, I think every situation is a, plus out of it, no matter how devastating it is. I feel yeah. like God has a message in every devastating moment. And yeah. if that is a devastating moment where they are at their last or they're homeless, it's like at this point in time, what is, what is, it, what is it to, for me to learn right now? And take heed to it. And once you understand that this was my lesson, then how are you gonna move forward? Tyler Perry, he was in this, he was living in his car before he became Tyler Perry. Yeah. Steve Harvey was homeless before he became Steve Harvey. Yeah. And Steve Harvey ain't popping till he was like in his late 40s, uh, early 50s. Mm -hmm. Right. And everybody been through their trials and tribulations, but some of the most great, the greatest people on this planet all came from nothing. So that literally shows you that by you being in your situation right now is actually a benefit for you. Because yeah. if you really think about it, some of the most wealthiest people, you don't really see their kids like blow up or something. Like you don't really see, see it much, but that person who we idolized came from literally nothing, right? Yeah. Like Diddy, Diddy, Diddy didn't have everything lent, played out like that. But then guess what? He got Andre Harrell who became his mentor. Yeah. And then, Andre Harrell had his record label and Diddy then got mentored by him to now start his record label based on what he learned from Andre Harrell. Harrell. And then he came, he launched Diddy, uh, uh, he launched um, he launched himself, he, he launched um, Biggie, Lil' Kim, yeah. Jodeci, Heavy D, Mary J. Blige, and he took that mentorship and accelerated, right? But he came from nothing but realized like okay yes i'm in this situation but what can i do to get to where i gotta go so he started serving and started providing a service for free so many times people come in they just like oh i need to get paid i need to get paid right right but literally that's what's that's what's crippling you feeling like you gotta get paid come in pay your dues Pay your dues right now. If you don't have no money, it's the perfect time to just figure it out. Go go back to your mom's house for a little while. It'll right. be a humbling, a humbling experience. Take yeah. that time and get yourself together. Get your thoughts right. You know, stop building on that dream you always dreamed about. You have nothing to lose. You already at the bottom. So there's mm -hmm. nowhere to go. You're you're literally at rock bottom. The only way to go now is up. Yeah. So that should be nothing but motivation. That should be nothing but motivation. So that's that's what I think. Wow. 
That's so powerful. And you speak with such eloquence and you speak uh, with such wisdom. And I really know that I'm just looking at the comments right now that people, some people were like, I'm crying just listening to this. So I'm glad that it's really resonating with you. You know, for some of you guys who've been following me over at my page, you know, three years ago in 2017, within a blink of an eye, I lost everything. And I was actually homeless and I was sleeping in my car just three years ago in 2017. And fast forward to three years later, like God has done such an amazing work in my life. And I give all the glory to God because I could have lost my mind. I literally could have lost my mind, but God kept my mind, right? He kept my mind. And, you know, with uh, my Instagram page now, it's been growing so fast. And we'll, we'll speak more in a minute, you guys, about Instagram growth and Instagram strategies and, you know, Spectacular has an academy. We'll talk about that in a second, but we just want to have a real heart to heart moment with you guys, you know, because we know that life isn't always, you know, peaches and, and love. Sometimes it's rough. Sometimes, you know, you have to go through some things, right? So you can grow through them to reach the next level of your destiny. So with this page, it's grown literally from zero to 45,000 followers in 11 weeks. Right. So this, is, so this is a new business page. I had my personal page before, but I wasn't really monetizing it. But I'm like, you know what? Now is the time for me to start really using my skill set to do it, because for so long I was helping other people and companies monetize their pages and working as a social media manager for different companies and a marketing manager for different corporations. But I always saw it as a side hustle. Right. It was always like a side hustle. So it wasn't until this year that I decided to take it full time just a couple of weeks ago. And it's blown up already. Uh, and I'm, I'm, ma I'm making thousands and thousands of dollars just off these couple of weeks. Um, and I'm looking forward to that growth. And what I love about you is you are an excellent mentor. Like you said, you know, you didn't really have a mentor to a couple of weeks, like a couple of years ago, three years ago. But now you are mentoring literally millions of people um, into their purpose, you know, into the next level of their influence, into the next level of their calling. So um, I want to know, let's talk about, let's, let's transition from, from that point and let's talk about your company. Like, let's talk about what your company does and how it actually helps people. Because that's, that's the business we're in, you guys. We're here to help you guys level up. We're here to help you guys achieve your goals and, and, and accomplish your dreams. So share a little bit about your company. Babe. Which one? <laughs> Which let's one talk about Adwazar. Let's talk about okay, Adwazar. Okay. All right. Um, so yeah, and so Adwazar started off as a company to help celebrities monetize their social channels. Like I said, every successful business is solving a problem. And one of the biggest problems I was seeing in the music industry is you had all these artists who put in all this work and created this massive fan base. But if they didn't come out with a hit, the label bench them. And now all of a sudden, they they source of revenue cuts off. So yeah. I decided to take my skill set that I was using for my own benefits and these create creating these parody accounts and these role plan accounts and all these different accounts. And I decided to just say, hey, this celebrity already has five, 10, 15 million followers. You know, it took me four years to build up to six millions and I'm, and I'm making two to three thousand dollars a day. How can I basically transition that to the celebrity? And once I transition it to them, I can make 10 X the money because they got 10 X the followers. Yeah. So I solved that. I solved that void. And, and I felt like that was something that was well needed. And I just started partnering up with these different celebrities and I started making them. So guys who had a hit since 2004, making $20,000 a month based off of something I was bringing to the table that was just sitting there. So all these mm -hmm. guys are sitting on gold mines and they didn't know how to monetize it. But then I realized that, Celebrities ain't the, the gratefulest people in the world. Right. And, you know, they jump ship depending on who got the biggest paycheck for them, no matter what. So right. I would take celebrity pages and grow them from like nothing to like millions of followers. And then somebody would be like, hey, you know, I can make you way more than him. And, you know, they, they dangle the carrot and they jump off the ship and they go out there and realize it's not what they thought it was. And they come back and then like everything is damaged. So I got tired of playing that and I, I transitioned from that to say, you know what? I'm going to start helping more people that would appreciate what I'm doing. Yeah. And instead of me putting the value on how much money I'm going to make you, I put the value based on the follower growth. So if I 
grew their followers, 79 million followers, which I did within the last three years, I would have had a valuation of 79 million versus like, oh, you know, I made them a few million and they just take it for granted. So right. I switched, I switched the narrative and based it based upon follower growth and say, hey, and I'm gonna make you some money. So when they yeah. seen the followers growing, go, growing the way it was, then they see more value in that versus yes. versus like the money part of it, which was which was whatever. You know, somebody can compete with the money, but they couldn't compete with the amount of growth I was giving them. So once I switched it, I kind of got them to get more serious. But then I was already turned off. So I started mm -hmm. helping these these companies who had this great vision, this great product, great brand, but they didn't know how to expand it to the masses. So I created the same formula and I transitioned over to the normal everyday businesses. And then mm -hmm. these executives was just like, yo, you know, you're killing it for my, my brand, but I have a product too. So then I started working with Fortune 500 companies. Wow. So now once I start working with Fortune 500 companies, then you know, I started getting even more notoriety and everything like that. Then I got tired of that too. And I was just like, <laughs> you know what? Everybody can afford what I'm charging. Uh, right now, the waiting list for my company is all the way to next year. Like I, don't, I can't even take no more clients because it's so much business. I have a waiting yeah. list. And I was like, you know what? I need to help more people. And in order for me to do that, I can take exactly what I have right now yeah. And I can literally put it in video modules, break it down step by step. And the average everyday person can literally do what I'm doing for themselves, start their own agency, start their own business. I got mm -hmm. so many clientele. I got so much clientele. I need help. Like I need somebody to take some of these clients I got. And if I can teach you how to do it, then you can do it yourself. Yeah. You know, you don't have to pay me. They can literally pay you to do what I was going to do for them. And you could cut the price in half, you know, and they're going to go with you because you're doing the same exact thing I was going to do. So I decided to start my, my own online business school. And I was like, you know what? I want to take it even further. So I started, instead of professors, I started getting millionaire mentors. Mm -hmm. And then I'm a strong person. Uh, I'm a strong believer in modeling after success. So I went to Harvard. And I was like, all right, let me go see what Harvard is doing because mm -hmm. I want to have the best school on the planet. So let me go to Harvard and let me get, go figure out what Harvard is doing, how they have everything structured. What, did they, what, what does their curriculum look like? Because I hated school. I freaking hated school. So yeah. but I went there and I was like, oh, okay, they teach on, they teach on case studies. So I, I did so many businesses that nobody really know about, like the throwback jerseys, TV jerseys, runway in Paris. I was a part of that company, ended up selling that company. Um, I was, I had the Moolah game memes, had the grumpy cat. I had a bunch of businesses that nobody really knew about. Cause I was behind the scenes and I was like, okay, well, I got a bunch of case studies. So let me, let me put that into my program. And instead of learning from somebody who's, who's never did what I want to achieve in life, let me get somebody that the people will really want to learn from that's really achieved everything that I would want and put it into a program. And that way it's not somebody telling you something they never achieved. You literally have millionaire mentors that's killing it right now. That's making millions, multi-millions right now. That's yeah. giving you things that's working right now. So I started the online business schools called Spectacular Academy and, and replaced yeah. professors with millionaire mentors and, you know, did a curriculum that you can do at your own pace, work from anywhere in the world and based it on some of some case studies and, I have a master business influence program, which is my version of an EMBA. It's a certification nice. program on being a social media entrepreneur, making passive income from social media, growing the followers and gaining influence. And then I have a, a beginner program where I just mentor once a month and, uh, and you just get taught a skill set. So for the beginner program, you said you mentor once a month. Where does that happen at? Yeah, so we do it right now. We're going to switch platforms right now. We're doing it on Zoom. Okay, but nice. it's called my under, my undergrad accelerator program, and okay, it's nice. just just to get you in. It's real low cost, just to get in, mentor you, learn a skill set. You know, Donald Trump literally signed a bill trumping a skill set over a college degree. Like I was just like, yo, I've been <laughs> preaching this for so long, and now a president finally signed a bill backing up my thoughts and the things that I've been saying over all these years. So now we're teaching people skill sets. 
Because if you don't have a skill set sooner or later in the next 20 to 30 years, you're going to get replaced by a robot. So yep. you got to learn the skill set. Be prepared. The people that it's like this, this, this whole pandemic, the people that was prepared are soaring like eagles right now. Yeah. The people that yeah. wasn't prepared are the ones that's panicking. So the, if you, if you stay, if you, if you stay prepared, you ain't got to get prepared. You're ready at all, all aspects of life. You don't, you don't have to, when it happened, you are, you already there. You don't have to think about it or what to do because you're already battle tested. Like my yeah. students, like they had no issue when all this pandemic stuff happened because they already had a skill set built. There was already training. So when the wartime came, they was out there kicking butts, still kicking yeah. butts. Yeah. Wow. I love that. I love that. And that's what business is all about. That's what being, I just think being in tune um, is all about. It's about being able to see ahead, right? It's, it's about be, already being several steps ahead of the game, you know, before anything happens. Um, you know, so I think that's really, really awesome. So we're going to take some questions in just a second here. But I want to talk to you about, um, you know, for the rest of this year, if you can just give us a couple of tips, a couple of tips on, you know, what people should do when it comes to uh, people that want to grow their brand online, whether it's their Instagram page or whatever, their Facebook pages, they want to grow their influence. What are, what are a couple of tips that you can give the audience right now? What well, the best tip I can ever give you, probably the best advice I can give you is join my spectacular academy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't <even> say that. <laughs> but uh, just to give you some immediate um, things you can take action on, there's a few ways, man. They got engagement groups to get your engagement up. Um, they got giveaway strategies where you give away stuff and, and people follow you for the giveaway and, and then you re-engage back with them. Mm -hmm. uh, it's certain things you can set up and, you know, automatically engage with the people that follow you. So it's reciprocated. If you like somebody picture, nine out of 10 are going to come and like yours back. If yeah. you comment on somebody picture, nine out of 10, they're going to comment back. So once you do the strategy to get the people to your page, then it's another strategy, another layer underneath that to get now those people that came to follow you for a specific reason. Now you engaging with them all of a sudden they engage back and now y'all cool. It's like, yo, you like my stuff. I like your stuff. Right, right. Comment We're on mine, comment on yours, you know? <laughs> and, and you start building that rapport with your new followers. So I would definitely do those and, uh, and set that up and I think you'll be good to go. Yeah, and you said something I think that was so important in the beginning and throughout your conversation, just the importance of supply and demand. And when it comes to, you know, you being in business or whether you want to grow on social media, whatever your goal is when it comes to growing your influence, you have to have a product or service that's in demand. You know what I mean? It has to be something that's in demand if you want to see that type of exponential growth. So, of course, I can engage with a page. Right. But if there's if I only have two photos on my page and they're like a picture of my dog and cat, like no one's going to want to engage with a page because I'm not giving any value. I'm not, I don't have a product or service that's in demand. So you guys, I really want you to focus on, um, you know, what product or what service can I create in this time or, or how can I perfect the product or service that I currently have um, and, you know, make sure it's something that's in demand so you can grow and continue with that engagement, you know what I mean? Doing all those things so you can build that influence. So I think that's actually really, really great. So how does enrollment work, um, Spec? People just click the link, they, you do a free webinar, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I just do free webinars. And uh, when I do the free webinar, um, I'm actually doing one today. I'm actually doing one today. Click the link in my bio, just sign up for the webinar. Uh, if you guys want to join and um, I give a free training at the end, I talk about my online business school. If you guys want to take it to the next level with me and get me to mentor you and get my millionaire mentors to tap in, then you could jump into the program and, and you know, take it to the next level. That's really what it's about. But one, th one thing I do want to say is that I see a lot of people giving up on themselves. And, and I just want to touch on that because I just feel like that's something that needs to be said right now. Yes. We, we as people just got to take it across the finish line. So many people start and just never finish. Yeah. You, no matter if you're starting something and, and, and like you start a project and you stop in or you go into the gym and you stop going to the gym, like you on this diet and you stop getting being on the diet and like you lose focus. Like we got to 
build willpower. When you build willpower is yes. when you take things across the finish line, when you finish things. Like you can start building this muscle by getting up, make your bed, you know, yes. or get up, you know, and, and, and start something and, and finish it. Like you got to figure out what you're going to do every single day to start building that willpower. And, and it's going to pour into your, your normal everyday life. You know, you got to sign that contract yeah. with yourself. Like, hey, if I start something, I'm going to finish it. And yeah. I like to give the example of the of the guy who made the light bulb. It took him 10,000 times to make the light bulb. 10,000 yeah. tries. A lot yeah. of us get to 10 tries, 100 tries, 1,000 right. tries. And you're Ready like, I quit. Up. I'm out. Like, man, this ain't happening. It's been six months. I ain't rich yet. What's yeah. going on? <laughs> Why ain't rich yet? I see people on the Instagram getting rich in six months. Why I ain't rich? The difference mm -hmm. between the people that's on Instagram and you is that you're too busy worrying about the instant gratification that mm -hmm. you see on Instagram mm -hmm. versus trying to dig behind the scenes and pulling back the curtains and realizing that that six months, that person probably done cried themselves to sleep. That yeah. person probably done went bankrupt. That person had to borrow money. That person probably lost family members and friends. That person done probably lost sleep crying like they lost their relationship probably they lost somebody throughout the time yeah. like it's a bunch of stuff it's a bunch of stuff pressure to make diamonds right you yeah, gotta make sure it. that everything that you're doing you take it across the finish line you stop bullshitting blaming it on people saying why mm -hmm. you ain't who you supposed to be the only reason why you ain't supposed to be what you're supposed to be at right now is because of you there's no other reason and if you're not there yet then you got to figure out why what is the reason? Yeah. Dissect your life and figure out what is the reason that I'm not here yet. Is it my friends? Is yeah. it me giving up on myself? Is it me missing on opportunities that I know I'm supposed to take advantage of, but I'm too scared? Or I'm feeling like I'm not worthy enough to have what I know I'm supposed to have. Mm, that part. And you just got to figure that out. Take it across the finish line. Take it serious. You're no, you're no different than anybody who got all this money. Nobody's mm -hmm. no different than me. Nobody's no different than Diddy, than Jay-Z. Like, they literally got the same 24 hours. All they did was they created willpower, consistency, mm -hmm. being persistent, building relationships, giving. The more you give, the more you get. People don't realize yeah. that. We got taught the game is to be sold, not told, but that's some BS. No, you need to give as much as you can give, no matter what it is, no matter what you do on this planet Earth. If you have something that can help somebody, it's a disservice for you not to give that person that golden nugget. Mm. Mm. Powerful, man. Mm. <laughs> so powerful. Are you guys listening? Are you guys taking notes? Are you guys taking notes? Consistency is the key to winning any war. Right. Any any race in life. Consistency is the key day in, day out, day in, day out. You know, like even right now, over these last couple of months, I've literally been working 18 hour days, 18 hour days. And I've barely been getting any sleep. But I'm seeing the greatest growth in my business because I'm committed to working those 18 hour days, because I'm committed to getting up day in and, and day out, you know, doing what I'm supposed to be doing. So um, so everything that Spec is telling you guys is right on the money. Right. He's no different than you. I'm no different from you. You just got to be committed to your process. Everybody's process looks different, but you want to be committed to your process and stick mm -hmm. to it. So I love that spec. I love that spec. So what's next? What's next to come for, for you, for your business, for your life? Like what's on the horizon for you? Man, I got so much stuff, man. Um, one of the things that I'm building right now with my team is a way that we can be a tributary to the culture and have it where when we have these influencers that literally have all this influence and they do not know how to take that influence and make millions off of it. Yeah. And the people who support those influencers get nothing for supporting those influencers. So everything that's going on right now, yeah, is off. Literally, you will have you will have a company that will pay you as an influencer. You get your one check. When you get your one check, your fit tee, your your you know your uh your fashion over. You get your right. little things checked. Your 
flat tummy tea, whatever it is you get. Mm-hmm. Once you get that check, that's it. But the company, they get the residual. They get the lifetime value of that customer yeah. and it compounds. But you, you just got the one-time fee. But they wouldn't pay that influencer money if they wasn't making a return on investment, an ROI. Yes. So if they can continuously pour and put you on page on a payroll for your influence, then you can take that same influence and you can put it to your own product. Yeah. I was just talking about Gucci Man, right? Gucci Man did a deal with Gucci. But my thoughts are, why don't Gucci just create his own luxury brand and everybody yes. gonna buy it? Because that's the only reason why Gucci is dealing with Gucci Man is because they know that his influence is gonna supersede whatever check they give him. And they get the face value that you can never take back. Yeah. So me and my team is creating a company called Social Seed, where basically we're going to change the way the average person um, support their celebrities, their influencers. Mm-hmm. So we're going to have an accelerated engine that's going to test the products out. Once we test the products out, we pair it up with the influencer that matches that product that's already proven, mm-hmm. then take that rebrand it around the influencer, then make it the next Kylie Jenner or the next Fenty, and then mm-hmm. blow it up, right? And once we wow. get it to a point when before we start it, we let the micro investors, which is the people, the supporters, the top 1% fans, and we let the first thousand people invest $500 or $1,000 to be micro owners in the company. So imagine wow. being wow. a investor of Kali Cosmetics before she sold it for $600 million. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. the same people that support her right now that ain't get no money for buying her product and spending money with her, they ain't get nothing out of the deal. Mm-hmm. So not only that, but you're going to be literally an advocate for the product because you own the product. Yeah, You're a micro owner of the product. You're a micro investor of the product. And yes. then we're going to make it where those people can actually have creative rights where they can help beta test the product and give feedback in. Because one thing that the companies mess up at, they don't have the voice of the people. So if you mm-hmm. have the voice mm-hmm. of the people, then you can never go wrong with the product. You can never go wrong. always ahead of the game because your micro investors is going to tell you what's popping and what ain't popping. And if yeah. you have a filter that you're running through, you can never come to the market wrong. Mm. Never, like never. Mm-hmm. So that's that's one of the things I'm doing. Also, I got Spectacular Fitness. You can see my shirt right here. It's, nice. That's, that's coming soon. So I'm doing a whole um, I'm doing a whole fitness uh, movement, and because uh, because for me, everything I do has to integrate with my life. Yeah. Everything has to integrate with my life. Um, and one thing that connects with me is business, is family and health. If you don't have those three, you're off balance. So you need all of them. You know, my, my mentor jokes about how, jo- how Steve Jobs is spending his money right now. You know, it's a joke, but it's dead serious. You know, mm-hmm. Steve Jobs wasn't taking care of his health. So he's one of the most famous person in the world, but he ain't here to celebrate. Because he didn't take care of his health. So no matter what you do, you got to make sure that you take care of your health and, you know, double down on your business and make sure, you know, you get your family involved. And and listen, a lot of times people are like, yo, Spec, how you be doing all this? And like, with your son, you can't like, I just integrate, integrate, mm. you know, integrate your life with your family and, and you know, integrate it together. And that way, you're, you're spending time and then you have your time where you just spend the quality time and you figure yeah. that part out, which is one of the hardest things to do. But with the integration, at least you still have that bonding moment and that time you guys are spending together. Wow. 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 I love it. Somebody said health is wealth. Yes. <laughs> it very yes, much yes. is. It very much is. Okay. Wow. So that was amazing. Amazing. What I want to do now is I just want to take a couple of questions um, a couple of questions um, from you guys. So you guys can start commenting questions. And then I also pull up the question box um, and uh, see what we have. So let me see what questions we have. Um, hold on. Okay. 
Okay, drop us some questions, some real questions, you guys. I saw a couple of questions, but they were like kind of silly. <laughs> what advice do you both have in keeping faith when building your business or your business isn't growing? So what's your advice when it comes to keeping the faith? Yeah, I just gave an example about the light bulb. Right. It took 10,000 times to make that light bulb. Right. You want me to give you another example? Who's the richest man in the world right now? Do you know? I don't know. <laughs> you want to guess? Who you think? It's a pop quiz. Putting you on the spot. Me? Pop quiz. Yes, you. Uh, in the, the comments, y'all can, right can help her out. Who, can who can, is can the I richest, choose me? Who is the richest man in the world right now? Let me see who knows. In the comments, y'all can help her out. You talking about like financial, like in financial? Numbers? Who is okay, the well, richest? Who is the Jeff Bezos? Boom! First comment. Everybody okay. saying Jeff Bezos. All right, cool. Say the Amazon man. Exactly. <laughs> so, so Amazon. He actually, for the first seven years of his business, I don't know, seven to five, but for the first seven years of his business, he made no money. Yeah. Literally zero dollars. Yep. People was laughing at him. It was even a newspaper came out laughing at that he was a joke saying like oh his company ain't gonna be nothing ha 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 right and for the first 10 years of his business he was selling books all you knew him was for books and he almost went bankrupt three times they had to bail him out three times he was on the verge of bankruptcy mm -hmm. mm. now years later he started from one point and he pivoted once he cornered the market for that one thing. And then he started launching other things that he started testing the market with to see what stuck to the market. And as he started figuring out what worked, he removed what didn't work and he kept what did work. And as you start growing and growing and growing, all of a sudden he became one of the richest men in history. Right now he's on the verge of being the first man or person worth a trillion dollars he's on the way to a trillion so that that tells me that i cannot avoid being on the verge of bankruptcy if i'm trying to get the greatness yeah so if you ain't on the verge of going bankrupt <laughs> and and catching these ales then you ain't doing something right because right. if, if if the richest man in the in the history of the world that's on the way to a trillion dollars could not make money for the first seven years of their business and still believe because nobody can talk him out of that. Imagine if he would have quit. Yeah. Imagine if he would have listened to the naysayers to say that, oh, give up what you're doing. It ain't don't work. Give up. What are you talking about? Leave it alone. You know, that's yeah. that's a failed company. It ain't gonna ever work. I, I don't know. I never talked to him before, but I guarantee if I talked to him about his, his mission at the beginning, he'll tell, he'll tell me that so many people doubted him. So many people laughed at him. So many yeah. people told him it wasn't going to work. And we're all going through that right now. Somebody's laughing at you, saying how you ain't going to be nothing, how that ain't going to work. You're wasting your time. But if you believe, then one day it's going to happen. But once yeah. you stop believing in yourself, then it can never happen because you already got self-doubt. You can't fool yourself. You can fool the people, but when you go, go to sleep at night and you wake up, you are clowning yourself because you don't even believe yourself. Mm. So you got to keep moving forward. And no matter what financial situation you in, no matter how much it seemed like it ain't working continuously, go, 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 go. until you get to where you got to go. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm. I love that aspect because <laughs> and I really thought that was some type of trick question but I love that because you know even like circling it back to you guys that are watching this you guys gotta first already know that you are rich you know like I talk about this uh, I talk about this all the time and I, I, I taught on this yesterday that you have the treasure inside of you. You literally are already rich. Now it's up to you to pull out that potential, to pull out those ideas, to pull out those inventions that are already inside of you and to maximize them, right? Mm -hmm. So when people say, Who, who's rich? I'm like, I'm rich. And I tell my I tell my students, like, you're rich. You, you are already rich, right? Mm -hmm. And you just have to figure out how to 
draw out that purpose that's inside of you, you know? Um, and that's so important, you guys. So you are yeah. rich, you are a treasure, and um, that's an excellent, that's, that's so amazing. So um, it's about just staying on track and staying focused, you guys. You got to stay focused. Mm -hmm. So any other questions? Any other questions? Any other questions? We're going to take a couple of more questions, maybe like one or two more questions, because we just got a few minutes left. Someone say, you are a treasure. Yes, you are a treasure. <laughs> Wisdom at its finest. I feel blessed to witness this conversation. Well, we are actually so blessed to have you joining in with us. We appreciate you. Are you guys in real estate? Spec, are you in real estate? I run a couple of Airbnbs, but I kind of mm -hmm. put them on pause now because of COVID. Yeah, real estate is definitely something to get into, but I like things that I can get data back from. You know, mm -hmm. can't really get that much data back from real estate. For yeah. my business, if I put a dollar in, I can literally see, okay, that just made me $2 back. All right, if you turn this off, put that on. If you spend money here, like, I, I like to see my data. Like, I like to see everything. I like to analyze and and uh, adjust accordingly. That's what I like. And I don't feel like you can really do that with, with uh, real estate, but real estate is a great passive income that you can uh, you can build wealth off of also. Yes, it definitely is. My father is actually a real estate investor and he mm -hmm. owns several properties uh, in Chicago. So I grew up with a father that uh, worked in real estate. He still does it. So I actually know a lot about real estate. Uh, but for me, I took the angle of doing Airbnb. And I, that's literally how I, you know, I teach people how to make their first $10,000 a month. Um, I have a course on it. And uh, that's how I made my first 10 grand a month by like Airbnb uh, a space. So um but since COVID, that's that's on hold because, you know, that was just risky. Mm -hmm. So any other questions, you guys? Any other questions? We'll take maybe one more question, one or two more questions, you guys. Bonjour. Bonjour. What's up? <laughs> what book is he reading? What books are you reading, Spec? What's on your reading list? Pin that at the bottom. I might have post this. No, for sure. Go ahead. So my reading list, and, and I, I don't really like to talk about my reading list. Um, I like to basically talk about, I just posted it too, if you want to pin it in the comments. Okay, I, okay, let me see. I don't, <laughs> I don't know if I learned that yet. <laughs> so all you, gotta, all you gotta do is go to the comment and then tap on it. Tap go, on so it I gotta go back to your comment. Yep, go back to my time, comment, tap on my name. Okay, There's gonna wait, be wait. a menu that pop up and then it's gonna say pin. Oh, yeah, I see it. Okay, perfect. Pinned it. Awesome. All right, cool. All right, so I, I don't really like to talk about my books I'm reading because what I'm at in life, a lot of people are, are not in life. So I like to give books based on what I think the people that's watching can benefit them. So I would say some of the books that I think you guys should read is Richest Man in Babylon. Mm, I think you guys should read a book called Influence, a book called Disrupt You, mm. and Blue Ocean Strategy, and Four Hour Work Week. I think I will, I will start with those for you guys that's watching. I think that, that will be some good homework for you guys. Uh, I'll repeat it once again for you guys. So, Richest Man in Babylon, mm -hmm. Four Hour Work Week by Tim Ferriss. Great book. What influence influence mm -hmm. and blue ocean strategy i would definitely i would definitely get those get you guys going yeah and that, that's exactly. something like that that's something that'll get you guys going right now but the book i'm reading if you guys want to know what i'm currently reading right now is uh rocket fuel that's a book that i'm reading right now um it's about getting uh your number two to help you transition out of your CEO role of your company. Um, and another book I'm reading is The Everything Store from Jeff Bezos. Mm. <laughs> Funny he was just talking about him. Yeah, yeah, so those are the two books I'm reading right now. And I'm also reading uh, Elon Musk. I'm reading his story too, so. Nice. Yeah. 
three books I'm reading right now. Nice, nice. Yeah, he just said them, you guys. So you guys can just go back and watch the live and like see what the books are. Someone says, start with the richest man in Babylon. Someone said, what about 48 Laws of Power? 48 Laws of Power is good. I like that yeah. book. Yeah, that's good. All right, all right. So um, I was going to say we could take one more question, but um, I'm not really seeing too many questions. What's, what's your motivation? What gets you out of bed? We kind of covered that. We talked about motivation. We talked about faith. We talked about how to build. Now you guys got to just get out there and crush it, right? You guys got to just make it happen. We have a couple of months left in this year. You know, you can absolutely join Spectacular. He pinned the comment at the bottom. If you guys want to join uh, Spectacular, he has an academy. If you guys want to join that academy, you can absolutely join that academy. He's an amazing mentor and he'll teach you everything that you need to know about how to crush it, how to grow your brand, how to 10x, you know, 10x your income. So you can guys can definitely do that with the with the comment that's pinned and then of course for those of you all who are connected to me i have a a course that you can actually it's a uh, on demand it's an on-demand course that you can instantly download called instagram rich and i share my secrets on how i've grown my page in such a very very short period of time in a, the past 11 weeks and um you know a lot of just different growth strategies that have worked for me over these last couple of weeks so you guys can download that by clicking the link in my bio if you guys want to get connected with that. So Spec, when we gonna see you again? Spec, the, the audience, like when we go, when, when, they're like, when we gonna see Spec again? <laughs> you guys can join the you can you guys can join this group and then maybe in the future, yeah. you know, Spec, we can have you back again, you know. <laughs> yeah, we de we definitely gotta get you guys into the undergrad accelerator. If yeah. you guys can text or you can just go to spectacularacademy.com slash undergrad. Uh, that's my Lord, Lord tier program. I'm gonna actually let everybody here jump in for free. All you guys got to do is just put 20 start as the coupon code. It's going to be a, a, a tiny uh, sign up fee and jump in. I'm gonna let I'm gonna give everybody opportunity to jump in free. Just just jump in, go to spectacularacademy.com slash undergrad, put in the coupon code 20 start, or you can just text that number right there and jump straight in. I, I'll send you the guys the link. And uh, but from in the comment box, man, I want to know what you guys' best takeaway was on this session. Yes, yes, in the yes, comment yes. Box. Put what's, what was your biggest takeaway from this session? Your biggest takeaway. Biggest takeaway. Biggest takeaway. Someone said I can listen to you talk all day, Spec. <laughs> biggest takeaway. Thank you so much. And also, I have a podcast too. It's called The Spectacular Experience. You guys oh, want to nice. check me out? Yeah. Where is, is it? An Apple Podcast? Where Where can they find it? Yeah, everywhere they have podcasts. Nice, nice, nice. Don't give up on yourself. It's okay to fail. Almost necessary. Yep. Don't give up. The importance of ten xing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what did you guys learn? Really quick. We got about three minutes to live in yourself, to multiply your business. Consistency is key, absolutely. Finish what you start, that was a powerful point that Spec made, bringing value. Mm -hmm. All good, all right, so anybody who want my mentorship, all you gotta do is just text that link, man. Like I said, I'm gonna send a link to you. I'm gonna let everybody on here jump in for absolutely free for the first for 30 free. days. For free, what a free. For the free, all you gotta do is put twenty start, and uh, and also, man, I have I have somebody tag team with me every single month. The one you just missed was my mentor. Oh my God, he blew everybody away. Oh. It was my mentor, um, Jeff Hoffman, and um, it was it was amazing. So you guys are gonna get access to the replay also when you jump into the program, and uh, yeah, it's gonna be beautiful. But thank you for your time. Um, love everybody, man. That's here. That you know, supported throughout the whole time of, of the conversation. And uh, yeah, any, any last words for yourself? Wow, I just wanna say thank you so much for joining us. This was so valuable and so needed, you know, because you just never know what people are going through. And I know that today a lot of people are like, you know, I needed this push, I needed this fuel, I needed this energy. 
So um, I'm just grateful to have you on. Thank you, Spec, for agreeing to do this. And uh, we're sending you love. Anything you need, I'm here. I'm definitely signing up for, for some courses. I've already watched a free webinar. So uh, mm -hmm. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to move on to the next package deal you got. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, go. get, get locked in with you because um, you, you're amazing. Thank you. All right, everybody. Okay. Much love. Thanks for having me. You're welcome. Bye.